know. I don't know what that word that's on that sign. Obliteration. I don't know. I can't make it out. I know this isn't the embassy. <laughs> but that is. <laughs> it's in there. <laughs> Nobody here today. Country. This Israeli father desperate to find his kidnapped wife and two young daughters. There are babies and my wife. Uh, they are my only family. The Defense Department announcing the U.S. is sending military assets closer to Israel to deter any further attacks. While U.S. officials are not ruling out using the assets to help one of America's closest allies in its fight against Hamas. In Washington, Alice Barr, NBC News. Riding with an infidel. I'm on my way to the embassy. Let's see what I can get into. The Israeli occupation has the backing of much of the West, of, of the U.S. that has the, the strongest military in the world. And our tax dollars here in the U.S. are supporting that. Israel gave the land where Gaza is to the Palestinian people. If you really are concerned about the rights of Palestinians, the first thing we have to do is make sure Hamas does not have control. Now, some of those in the community holding a couple of events to stand in solidation with Israel. Tonight at 7.30, there will be an evening of prayer and unity at Chabad of Cobb and Marietta. Then tomorrow night at 7.30, there will be a gathering of support for Israel at the City Springs for, for, for Performing Arts Center in Sandy Springs. We'll continue to follow all the developments. I know this isn't the embassy. <laughs> But that is. <laughs> it's in there. <laughs> Nobody here today. Using motorcycles, pickup trucks, and even paragliders and speedboats, Hamas terrorists penetrated Israeli towns near the Gaza Strip and began killing and kidnapping civilians, including women and young children. They also launched thousands of rockets into Israeli cities starting early Saturday morning. Some of the worst violence occurred at a music festival called Nature Party. The police can be seen trying to evacuate people, seemingly still unaware of the danger. Hamas terrorists reportedly shot at people trying to escape. A terrorist here takes a hostage. Festival goer Noah Argamani was taken hostage by the terror group. Her boyfriend is also taken, led on foot. A festival aftermath video shows the roadside strewn with shot up and wrecked cars. A local resident of a kibbutz invaded by Hamas fighters described what was happening on Saturday. The idea after at least seven hours of being locked down in our safe rooms, the idea finally arrived and started going through the, the kibbutz house by house, bush by bush. They have to clear everything out. They've killed nine terrorists so far this man's wife and two daughters were taken hostage by terrorists it's not simple to know that uh, your two babies and your wife and your entire family the most precious thing you have is captive families of missing israelis called for answers from the government at a news conference on sunday this mother of a missing daughter spoke of a painful phone call the SL at around 10 15 a.m she called and said mom they're shooting at us the car is hit we are all wounded mom i'm bleeding mom i'm scared i'm going to die israeli police released video of hostages after a gun battle in southern israel on sunday the video showed people including children wearing only underwear with israeli forces Israel was quick to respond to the invasion with its own missile attacks on the Gaza Strip. 
Israeli Air Force has attacked locations thought to be associated with Hamas. Daniel Monahan, NTD News. And now headlines from around the world. The death toll from strong earthquakes that shook western Afghanistan on Saturday has risen to over 2,000. About 12 villages have been hit and hundreds of civilians have been buried under the debris. It's one of the deadliest quakes to strike the country in two decades. Turkey says it's captured over 2,500 fugitives as part of a nationwide counter-terrorism operation. It was launched after Kurdish militants detonated a bomb near government buildings a week ago. Turkey is targeting the outlawed Kurdistan Workers' Party militia who claim responsibility for the bombing, as well as the Syrian Kurdish YPG militia. In Germany, Chancellor Olaf Scholz's centre-left coalition was dealt a sharp rebuke in two key states yesterday. Voters in Bavaria and Hesse boosted the opposition centre and right-wing parties. Analysts said this will further stoke tensions in the three-party coalition. The Metropolitan Police housed the success of an operation against organized crime groups that sent over 400 people to prison, including senior crime bosses, which follows the infiltration of a secret message platform used by criminals. The Met Police said more than 400 criminals, including senior crime bosses, have been imprisoned in its biggest operation against organized crime groups. Uh, we've made over 900 arrests, uh, we've convicted 426 uh, individuals uh, and, uh, for total imprisonment of 3,722 years. That's an average of eight and a half years per, per conviction. The operation used... Thanks for joining us. Good to have you on the show. Glad to be back with you. Rabbi, in response to the surprise attack by Hamas, world leaders, including two members of Congress, are calling on Israel to have restraint in their response. What impact is that kind of rhetoric having on U.S.-based Jews? <clears throat> well, I think that the, you know, we have to begin with, the, you know, when they say it, they, they act like they're saying a neutral diplomatic thing, that both sides should exercise restraint. Of course, they only do this after the catastrophic terror atrocity, whatever that might be, which in this case uh, amounts to the largest massacre of Jews since the Nazi Holocaust. Uh, that's what just transpired in Israel. So when they call for restraint now, they're basically saying that Israel shouldn't do everything it can do to neutralize the Hamas terror organization, to just punish them a little bit and then allow them to regroup, rearm, and find new ways to do new atrocities the next time. Restraint is exactly the wrong answer. Restraint is how you lose wars. Nobody called for restraint with Ukraine. Nobody called for restraint when the United States and the British were bombing Dresden into ruins on their way to defeating the Nazis. And actually, uh, restraint was called fatal restraint. It was pilloried in a documentary about the Vietnam War as how the United States lost the war because the president at the time, Lyndon Johnson, insisted on a policy of restraint. Restraint, you lose wars. They want Israel to lose. And obviously that has an impact uh, on American Jews and on Jews in Israel and on the safety of that entire region. Uh, basically the, you know, the entire, what the world is doing is creating a hostile climate for Jews. And we see that playing out in America when you've got demonstrations in the street and even from a group of Harvard University students making declarations in support of Hamas terror organization. And Rabbi, you mentioned that restraint is not the correct answer. And to your point, Hamas is designated a terrorist organization by the U.S. and U.N. What is the correct answer here? What is the correct response? I, I think at this point it's abundantly clear that Hamas, uh, it has genocide in its charter. It cannot coexist beside Israel. Uh, this has proven it beyond beyond measure. Uh, this is uh, what just happened is Israel's 9-11. Though when you consider that it is a country of only 9 million people as compared to the 330 million people in the United States, it's as if 40,000 Americans had died. And that is the proportion of the tragedy. That literally almost everyone in Israel knows somebody who was murdered just a few days ago. And as a result of that, you don't have a, a society anymore that is that is willing to put up with this delusional pipe dream 
of, of living side by side with Hamas, the terror organization, and its Palestinian Authority cheering section. And Rabbi, you did bring up the Harvard. So there are 31 Harvard organizations who are blaming Israel for the Hamas attack. They're saying that Israel has, quote, forced Palestinians to live in an open air prison for over two decades. Give us a sense of what's at the root here. Why are we seeing this attack unfold now? Uh, you know, well, of course, that narrative has been developing over time. Um, but, it, I mean, it is simply moronic. It's imbecilic. These people have never learned anything about Middle Eastern history or are deliberately lying about it. Because what actually happened is that Israel in 2006 deliberately disengaged from Gaza, uprooted thousands of Jews from their homes, pulled out of that territory, said, here, we're going to give the Palestinian Arabs a section we call their own where they can develop a nice civil society. In fact, they left behind things like greenhouses that the Jews had painstakingly developed and left them behind for the Arabs who promptly destroyed them. The territory was very shortly thereafter taken over by Hamas. In fact, Hamas was elected to leave them, to lead them. This was democratically. The people of Gaza chose Hamas, the genocidal terror organization, to lead them. So that just sends a message of its own, obviously. But the, the idea that this was an open-air prison, first of all, that never happened. There are luxury hotels in Gaza. There are markets filled with, with food. There's all kinds of opportunities for people in Gaza. But second of all, it's not Israel that's controlling all the borders. Egypt has a border with Gaza as well. They only demonize Israel for doing what Egypt does as well, because only if they enter Israel will they find Jews to kill. It reminds us that half the architects of Hitler's final solution had PhDs, were academics. There is nothing wrong with saying a person has a high academic education and is a genocidal barbarian. And each and one of these Harvard student organizations just demonstrated that to be true. Because the entire narrative they presented was inexcusable, anti-Semitic, <laughs> from the Nazi era, blames Jews for the fact that Jews are being killed. It's all the classic hate narrative that Jews have heard for thousands of years. And Rabbi, given all of that, the U.S. has also confirmed that at least nine Americans were killed. The U.S. is now deploying an aircraft carrier to the region. What must the U.S. do now to help Israel? <laughs> I think the, the, the carrier is simply there as a show of alliance and force. It is saying to other allies in the region, don't get involved. There's already been an incursion from Lebanon, but the Lebanese really can't afford to get involved with Israel right now. This has to remain between Israel and Hamas. The largest mobilization that Israel's ever done of its reservists in its history just happened this week. Uh, there is nobody really that wants to tussle with the Israelis right now, but the Americans being there saying, don't, don't get us involved. We don't want you to be involved. Well, that's a very important thing. The other thing is that the Americans need to stay the course. It's great to ally with Israel when the Israelis are the victims. But what about is when Israel becomes the victors? Israel is about to enter Gaza. There's going to be a ground war. And because it's going to be a ground war, lots of innocent people are going to die. That's what happens in ground war conflicts. This is something that Hamas brought upon itself. This is something that Gazans brought upon themselves by electing Hamas to lead them and then doing nothing to stop them as they launched one terror attack after another against Israel leading up until this day. Rabbi Yaakov Menken, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. The first objective is to clear out hostile forces. Next is going to be an operation to, quote, exact an immense price from the enemy, including in the Gaza Strip. And third will be an operation to, quote, reinforce other fronts so that nobody should mistakenly join this war. Now, that third objective is likely in response to talk elsewhere. The groups, the terrorist groups, may try to actually join this. The Taliban, for example, had signaled its intent to attack. Hamas sent out warnings to other Islamist regimes, calling them to break ties with Israel. Saudi Arabia, Iran, Qatar have joined to blame Israel for the Hamas attacks. Now, the United Arab Emirates, meanwhile, has so far stood by Israel. They're condemning Hamas, suggesting that it's committed to the Abraham Accord, and it's really still in place. But 
Shiites elsewhere came out in large rallies in Yemen and Bahrain in support of Palestine, suggesting that factional disputes could still be divided, regardless really of where the national leaders stand on this. Now, as for the Biden administration, it is stuck between a rock and a hard place. Many Democrats, including most of the establishment media, they are pro-Palestine, or at least they were until now. We'll see how that goes. Yet they're now facing the cognitive dissonance of whether they back the attack tied to Iran and likely to Russia by proxy. It doesn't bode well for the Ukraine war narrative. Iran is also very closely tied with North Korea as well. It was unveiled, for example, in 2017 that North Korea had similar invasion plans against South Korea using paragliders, similar to what we, do with, similar to what we just witnessed in Israel. Now, the opposition bloc around Russia is likewise the opposition, opposition bloc tied in with Palestine, which had been a proxy force through Yasser Arafat, along with the old Soviet Union. That was the so-called Red-Green Alliance of Soviet-backed terrorism. This has continued under Iran, yet tied to the new global alliance alongside Russia, China, and North Korea. And it's going to be difficult for the pro-Ukraine lobby and, you know, to oppose Russia on one side, yet still support the, the proxy forces of Iranian and Russian terror. Now, on the other side, many Republicans are pro-Israel, yet many others are wary of the whole conflict with concerns that may drag the United States into a third world war. President Donald Trump warned about such an agenda previously. He claimed that former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Mark Milley, wanted him to attack Iran. Milley, of course, denies this claim, but the alleged document proving otherwise, well, that's now the central piece in the classified documents case against Trump. The case mm -hmm. where he's accused of, you know, taking classified documents home. Trump's being accused of showing that document where Milley wanted war with Iran to reporters. But Trump had also suggested it was Milley's idea to abandon U.S. military equipment to the Taliban. And Milley was also accused of communicating with China behind the president's back. Now, believe whichever side you want, but many Trump supporters, for them, this is taken as evidence that war with Iran was on the table and possibly the interest of the CCP as well to drag America into five conflicts, as they've been saying is the goal. Then there's the conflicting narratives of, well, if we support Ukraine, then does the Biden administration hold the same standard for Israel? Will Iran be treated differently in a proxy war than Russia is treated in a direct war? Then there's the other problem of financing. President Joe Biden is being blamed for bankrolling these attacks on Israel. Now, this ties to his, to his administration recently freeing up $6 billion to fund, well, in funds to Iran, Then the, although the full numbers are actually higher than this. Senator Ted Cruz criticized Biden for giving over $40 billion to Iran in cash and in oil sanctions relief. And Wall Street Journal has since revealed Iran did, in fact, help plan the recent terror attacks in Israel. It reported that Iranian forces have been working with Hamas on these attacks since August. And August was when Biden freed up that money. And on top of that, also, Iranian officials have given the green light for the terror attacks in a meeting in Beirut last Monday. With all this in context, yeah. many critics are now questioning why the Biden Jewish population of America should be uh, asking questions that have been unlocked for Iran to use. President Trump warned about this on August 17th. Watch this. Crooked Joe Biden just agreed to pay a $6 billion ransom to the Iranian dictatorship in exchange for hostages. This is yet another Biden surrender and a further blistering humiliation of the United States of America to the world stage. But even worse, this decision will be extremely deadly. Biden is giving $6 billion to the world's leading state sponsor of terrorism. Just as when Obama sent the Iranian regime pallets of cash for hostages in the dark of night, remember, plain loads of cash, Biden's ransom payment will be immediately used to stoke violence, bloodshed, and mayhem throughout the Middle East and all around the world, costing countless innocent lives. So now that this is actually happening, why is the Biden administration not refreezing the cash to Iran? 
Well, it's possible the Biden administration can't afford to do it. Now, the other big elephant in the room right now is that the coalition of countries tied in with it also have a monopoly on gas and oil. Russia controls energy for Europe, but oil and gas is also a problem as well. Biden right now is being accused of draining U.S. strategic oil reserves in he order has. to artificially lower gas prices ahead of the elections. Middle East oil producers have likewise been able to corner the global supply. Politico, for example, they're now reporting that a renewal of sanctions on Iran could derail its thawing relations with Saudi Arabia and send global fuel prices soaring. Problems don't end there either. There are also questions of whether U.S. weapons made their way to Hamas terrorists through Afghanistan or through Ukraine. Russia is being accused of spreading disinformation that U.S. military supplies to Ukraine are being sent to Hamas. But the possibility, unfortunately, is not far out. CBS News, they reported previously and then deleted a claim that only 30% of U.S. military aid for Ukraine was actually reaching the front lines. And there's concern that some officials in Ukraine have been reselling equipment and weapons. Now, Ukrainian leader Volodymyr Zelensky has been really probing corruption on this and recently replaced the country's defense minister because of it. But regardless of whether Ukrainian aid is making its way to Hamas, there are reports that U.S. arms left for the Taliban have fallen into the hands of Palestinian terrorists. When Biden pulled the United States out of Afghanistan, he left more than $7 billion in military equipment functional for the Taliban. The Middle East Monitor had reported in June that some of the small arms, things like rifles and so on, had been spotted in the hands of terrorists in the Gaza Strip, where Palestine is. And there's evidence now of this as well. Now, Donald Trump Jr. posted a video of Palestinians celebrating the terror attacks, and he noted the guns weren't the typical Kalashnikov variant seen in the region. Instead, he noted they look a whole lot like American M4s and other guns that were abandoned for the Taliban. Yep. Now, Regardless of how things move forward, as things currently stand, the United States is supporting Israel in this conflict, including how it could go forward. Netanyahu issued a statement today telling Israel to prepare for a drawn-out war. The Biden administration has pledged rock-solid support and has likewise begun moving warships to the region, suggesting the U.S. is going to help if needed. Republicans seem to be on board as well for the most part. But of course, all of this is still developing. This very realistically could turn into a war that the U.S. could very possibly get pulled into. Uh, but we'll be covering it here as the situation develops. Choice that he switched over to independent, just so he's not constantly bickered by the Democratic Party. Kennedy acknowledged that other candidates in the past have also become independent. But he said this time it'll be different because the independent will win. If you want to watch Kennedy's full speech, you can visit NCD.com. Jason Perry, NCD News, Philadelphia. Turning now to Afghan earthquakes, more than 2,400 people have died after the deadly tremor struck northwestern Afghanistan. 10,000 users in the UK and was accessed by a secure password on Android phones. They, these criminals are using what we call a hardened secure communication device. So effectively, it's almost like a social media platform that the criminals believe that we can access. So they were playing out their lifestyles uh, and, uh, and, and, and trading drugs, you know, ordering uh, violence, uh, you know, uh, you know, ordering murder here in the streets of London. The operation was launched in March 2020 after French and Dutch law enforcement infiltrated the EncroChat system. Brogdon said many of those uncovered in the operation were significant and among the highest echelon of criminality in London. The foundation of society is a pile of rubble. Ah, uh, right in the middle of the walkway, where it should not be. I mean, you got all this space right here to park a scooter. But, no, you got to leave it right here in the middle of the walkway. It's in my way. 
flatliners. Here's my bank. What is that? Did somebody leave something up there? Orange? A hood? Oh, one of those little caps? Who knows? That's where my bank is. They're fixing to do something down here. The service truck and all that. I don't have to find out what it is.